Hello, welcome to Shad Life. Well, I have a ride in about 45 minutes. And yesterday when I was riding this bike, I noticed that I had some creaking going on in the crank. So I'm taking apart the crank set, got the left arm off already. And if you look at how dusty this is, it's probably why things get a little creaky and stuff. So. I'm going to check this area because there's really no other area I can think of where the creek would be coming from. Um, it can be the sprocket mounted to the crank. It could be the bearings not tight enough in the frame or the cranks not tight enough in the bearings. Or it could be the pedals. And since um, I'm here and I have these cool uh, wolf tooth waveform pedals, I wanted to take the pedal out. I noticed it was a little sticky so uh, I just want to show you how easy it is to like take the pedal off of the pedal spindle or pedal shaft whatever you call this and then once I do that it we, I can get in there and grease things and make sure that it's uh, nice and looped um, which doesn't surprise me when you see this kind of dust and stuff that things get a little grimy in there so it's good to take this apart and clean it out okay so you have to take this outer cap off and this actually goes normal so it's like lefty loosey righty tighty which is the normal way you thread things on and off and then that comes off right and you know it's got lube in there it looks pretty good so we'll go ahead and set this aside and then you'll notice the pedal's a little loose on the shaft now but it won't come off yet because there's another piece inside and that one i believe requires the three millimeter is that what it is yep three millimeter now, if I try to turn to the left, it won't come loose. This is reverse threaded. And the reason why is because of the way that your pedal rotates when you go, you don't want to work it loose. So they reverse thread things, similar to how bottom brackets are reverse threaded and uh, the pedals going into your crank. So, so once this comes all the way off, I'll show you this piece first. So this is the little bolt that goes in there and holds the pedal on. Um, and then, of course, this is the pedal, right? And this is the outside that I just removed and there's a bearing in there. And if I really wanted to, I could go and somehow figure out how to press that bearing out. Yeah, I can see a little edge there. So I could pop that bearing out if I needed to replace it. But instead, I'm gonna look visually. And to me, it looks pretty clean in there. And it's not, there's not dirt. It doesn't look like that's a problem. And it's pretty clean here. This, on the other hand, looks a little dry. So what I'll do is I'll just put some uh, grease in here you can see this grease or actually believe it or not I could probably just <laughs> there we go because <laughs> there's plenty of grease in this middle part I just use the grease that's already on the shaft it was just kind of bunched up in the middle here now that's fully greased and basically what I'll do is just put this back together oh I can already tell now that it like feels better that's pretty funny. So we'll go ahead and put this little screw back in. So what I do with this, because it's really easy to drop these parts, is I put it on the end of the, the hex key or Allen wrench, whatever you want to call it. And then I carefully put it in there and line it up until I find the threads. Now I know it's opposite. So I go this direction, and I go until it's tight. And I'm sure there's probably some torque specs. The problem is, is I don't have anything that would reach in there that I could actually torque. So I'm just going to get it tight. I mean, it came loose relatively easy. I can see that still moves, but that's fine. Look at this. 
Yep, plenty of grease on those threads. If there wasn't, if this was really dry, I would put some grease on it, and then I'm going to put this back up in. And that is how you can maintain your wolf tooth pedals. And the nice thing is, the thing that I like about wolf tooth, you know, they're made in the USA, but one of the other things I like about them is you can get uh, any parts you need. If I need the pins, if I bend or damage one, or if I needed the replacement bearing, this replacement cap, or even if somehow I landed hard and I somehow bent the shaft, I could get the shaft, but I would keep the, the pedal body, right? So, I mean, that's cool that they offer all the individual parts to repair, and they do that with all of their stuff. They, they believe in that right to repair concept. Okay, so I took this crank out and you can just see how dirty it is in there. So it's, I'm pretty sure this is where I'm getting a little bit of creaking from. And if you look at the bottom bracket, that could use some cleaning. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There's plenty of videos. This is a Shimano XT crank. Um, Plenty of videos on how to do this kind of work. Um, someday, maybe I'll do a video on it, but for right now, I'm just gonna clean this stuff out. But if you're ever having issues with, you know, creaking in your bike, usually I go to the crank set first to figure that out. But there's a lot of things that could be causing it. You know, I've had creaking come from seat posts before and seats, like even the seat can creak or the, area where you clamp your seat seat post and your headset could be creaky right those are like the most common it's either going to be your headset maybe your seat seat post and your crank set how i test these different things is like if i'm curious to know if it's within the seat is i stand up and pedal and if i'm still getting the creaking then i know the seat's all off the hook <laughs> and it's probably down here or up there right and then what I'll do is I'll stop pedaling and I'll coast and I'll like do a couple of bunny hops or jumps or whatever and see if I'm getting creaking from the bike. And if I am, I suspect that it's a headset, but it could still be the crank because it's pretty hard to bunny hop or do things without moving your crank set at all. So it could still be in the cranks, but I try to minimize or figure out while I'm on the bike kind of where it's coming from. And then, um, then the next step after that is to do what I do and just look at stuff and go, wow, that's probably the culprit. Just look at it. So there you have it. Um, I better stop filming and get this done because I got to have this bike ready in like 20 minutes and then put it on my car and get over to the trail. So I uh, really do appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.